Now, we are running a little short on time because of a slightly late start, and the Minister has got two bills he's got to get through the party room this morning, so he's on a very limited schedule, but he's happy to take a couple of questions. Would anyone like to uh, ask Minister Joyce a question relating to his address this morning, or for that matter, about anything else? And remember, time is of the essence. Who'd like to break the ice? Minister, I might just ask you a quick one uh, myself. Uh, beyond drought support and surviving uh, the short term for farmers on the land, uh, how will your government help build agriculture and infrastructure and also invigorate the next generation that we need to continue farming in this country? Um, well, thanks for that. The funny thing is, I I can't stand reading speeches. I'd much rather give uh, straight answers. I'd prefer to sit down here and answer questions for half an hour than give a speech. Um, there's a whole range of things that are on the table at the moment. I think one of the big ones is the Northern Australian White Paper as well. Uh, this is also going to be a seminal document into how um, and how our nation grows. We have a range of infrastructure projects which are running out at the moment. We put $300 million towards inland rail, something I've been fighting for for a long while. Um, what exactly does that do? Well, the inland rail will create greater internodal logistics, a direct rail uh, line between M Melbourne and Brisbane through the inland on a low gradient in a dry area so that we get greater efficiency. Uh, this will have the capacity to start reducing some of those transport costs. I've actually been encouraged by some of the work that my, some of my firmer, firmer adversaries have stated. I've been reading some interesting articles by Ken Henry and Ken Ergas, and when you can get those two on the same page, you're doing well. Um, and that talks about making sure that we start looking for you know, the rail networks to connect us up to the Port of Darwin. Uh, th these are the sort of thoughts. Dams policy. I was deputy chair of the dams policy, and we've got to start picking this up and driving it ahead, and we've got to start streamlining some of the processes. Um, in my backyard, we have a dam that we've been trying to build now for 10 years called um, Chaffee Dam. Uh, and this is one of the banes of my, you know, banes of my concern of this affection. It's been held up at the moment because of the Burulong frog. Now, this is a, an amazing frog because um, not only is it holding up a dam, but uh, 30 kilometres away, the town of, or well, not town, it's a little village. I grew up in the hills. And there's a little village called Weabonga, very similar to the little village I grew up in called Danglemar. Their road collapsed into the um, Swamp Oak Creek, and for eight years, they couldn't open the road back up again because of the Burulong frog. Now, I'm worried about this frog because it could take over. <laughs> so um, I've had a look to where this Burulong frog lives. Its range starts in northern Victoria and finishes in southern Queensland. This is a threat. <laughs> um, so, you know, but what I'm saying is the absurdity of when something becomes so bureaucratic, so much like sort of a Franz Kafka type of approach then we've got to have a hard look at ourselves and say, this, you know, we've got to get our heads around these sort of problems. Um, in the dams policy, I remember uh, Nathan Dam, which uh, on by design is about 1.2, 1.3 million megalitres, which actually would have the capacity to do something that so many people want to do, which is transfer water from one catchment into another. We could take it from the Fitzroy catchment and put it into the Murray-Darling catchment. Uh, what was holding that up is uh, the last one was the Bogomoss snail. Now, um, obviously good mates of the Burlong Frog. Um, and the, you know, it was held up by 1,800 bogomoss snails and then we went to an area where they weren't going to build a dam and found 36,000 of them. Um, so uh, these are the sort of issues that we, you know, we've got to... If, I'm absolutely certain that if we tried to build the Snowy Mountain Scheme now, it wouldn't be let through. Uh, and that's ridiculous. Could you please uh, thank the Minister, the Honourable Barnaby, Barnaby Joyce.